Different day, different shirt, same old bullshit. And that means I'm going to be doing another fucking episode of the prose that's going to make me want to kill myself, or corpses prose, in the form of the book, in big fucking air quotes, Kissing and Shitting the Stars, and Look at the Stars Today. Left off with Katherine Heigl. Now we're going to Taylor Swift. Just how many guys are you going to go through? I mean, you're 22, 23, and already you've dated more men than there are in the city of Chicago. Get a little bit jealous. Uh, you go through guys quicker than I go through beer. So you're admitting you're an alcoholic <laughs> at this fucking point. I don't know what causes this either. You're not ugly. In fact, most would say you're fucking hot. Bit of a fucking, you know, political neophyte and just, I'm not going to talk about politics at all. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm not going to condemn fucking white supremacists because of reasons. You don't seem like a complete bitch, although I've never met you. But you're fine with making assumptions about other fucking people, about them being bitches. You just... Oh, fucking Jesus Christ. You just... You don't seem like it. You just don't seem like it. That's You don't need the extra fucking you. I haven't seen you... Uh, have an emotional outburst, psychotic yelling fit, or even a drunken rampage like other stars. Th she, she, she has to have them. She just doesn't have them publicly like other people. So what's the deal, Taylor? Why can't you find the one? The only thing I can think of is that in a music video, you have a lot of people dressed up in furry costumes as you yourself are dressed in pajamas. Is that true? Are you a furry? Even though furries are would be ones that are also dressed in, you know, costumes. Do you follow the same stupid logic most women have when they get attracted to a guy? Getting attracted to the same walking disaster and expecting a different result. <clears throat> are you one of those women that like project men and are shocked to find out that's just the way they are? Hell, do you just like girls or something? In parentheses, that would be awesome. Good for her, because she wouldn't, you know, she wouldn't run the risk of dating you, you balding piece of shit. Whatever it is, I hope, Taylor, you find love soon, because I'm tired of hearing about your breakups every time I watch late night TV. Then don't watch late night TV. That's fucking easy. Uh, David Litterman. David Litterman, the last man standing, the last late night show host... That was a direct descendant of Carson. Okay. Does it feel good to have the last laugh? If it does, you richly deserve it. In my opinion, you were the one that got screwed out of The Tonight Show. It should have gone to you. You were the host of the show after Carson. It's kind of like the prince taking over for the king. And yet, earlier on, you bitched about people, you know... With the idea of a monarchy, but you're talking in monarchist terms. Although it must have been fun... Jesus Christ. Although it must have been fun to there from CBS... Seriously. Like, I've joked about this, but seriously. Are you, are you like, fetal alcohol syndrome baby or some shit? Or are you just rotting your brain with alcohol? <laughs> You know, have you done severe damage by alcohol poisoning? You must have had a great big smile on your face as you sipped expensive scotch and said, Jesus Christ, at least on there for this all over again. I did love the way that you championed Conan O'Brien during the whole ordeal. At least he had someone in his corner. I also love the way you brought up how NBC was just going to casually destroy the whole friggin' fucking... What if... Say friggin' fucking. Just for Jay Leno. I love how you easily and rightfully so made the executives of NBC look like the motherfucking morons that they are. One final note on David Letterman. I would just like to say I have always found him to be a to be the superior comedian 
with a superior show. The monologue might be better delivered by Leno on some nights, but Dave's jokes are funnier. And for me, you just can't be a good old-fashioned top ten list. I'm assuming it's supposed to be you can't beat a good old-fashioned top ten list. It takes much more talent to write ten jokes for a fictitious top ten list than it does to find sta- uh, to find typos in the Polka Daisy Press. Of course, you'd be like, how dare you comment on fucking typos, you know, when your prose is just riddled with fucking typos and grammatical fuck-ups. <sighs> Stephen King. America's master of horror and one of my favorite authors. I'm not one of the odd fans that thinks everything he writes is with the golden pen of the gods, but I like most of his stuff. There are some books of his that he, that hated. I'm assuming it's supposed to be that I hated. And some that I loved. Despite what some people think, even King has a stink bomb now and again. The vast majority of his books are entertaining. I just have a question, or rather a request. Mr. King, would you please stop publishing for just a couple fucking months? There are a lot of young writers, Mr. King, that would like to get a shot at being published. How the hell can we do that when you write a new novel every three fucking minutes? Could you just stop for a couple years and get some other people a chance? Give people? Give some people? Then you can take your throne back and resume publishing a book a week. Why don't you go and write another Dark Tower series? I'm sure seven 1,000 page books would take you approximately two years. You would get a chance to create a new massive world and someone else might have a chance to sit on the horror throne before you kick them back off. You do realize you can look for other authors, right? Like Saladin Ahmed. It's really good. Uh... He writes comics, and he's done uh, books. Um, shit. It's something of the Crescent Moon? Empire of the Crescent Moon or something like that? I never finished it, because I had to give it back to the library. But it was really good. It, it had a whole like different take on the high fantasy thing, where it's like, let's look at the Middle Eastern uh, myths and legends and, you know, have it based in the Middle East. Uh. <clears throat> it would be a win-win that's not going to happen because you write an entire novel going through the drive through at McDonald's and the rest of us can't not all of us can write novels faster than a speeding bullet Mr. King you can't write a fucking novel at all Will Smith could you stop hogging all the fucking cool you're already a list actor eh. and a platinum artist eh. it doesn't mean jack shit uh, on top of that You've got millions of dollars, great wife, great kids. There should be a comma between millions of dollars and great wife, but... Could you just leave us some of the cool, Mr. Smith? You've got the acting career, you've got the music career. Do you really need all the cool in the world, too? Wrong, too, by the way. Thank you, that is all. Adam Sandler. Just how many stink bombs is this guy going to give us before he packs it in and gives up? He was funny on Saturday Night Live. He had a couple of funny movies in the 90s. Then as the 90s turned into the 2000s, he started to suck as bad as Crystal Pepsi. At least you can drink Crystal Pepsi. Can't really stomach Adam Sandler shit. Any dramatic roles Sandler tried were a bigger disaster than the Hindenburg. Nah, uh, yeah, not the Holocaust. Yeah. As for your... Committees, C O M I D I E S. Retired of the happy Gilmore shtick. And Gilmore is capitalized, but happy isn't capitalized. It's over for you, buddy. Please get away from the fucking camera. Leave the movie sets, leave Hollywood, and never return. It's not all bad, though. You still have a viable career in the entertainment industry. There's always use your singing career. Sure, you don't have the greatest goddamn voice on the planet, any better than yours. And again, I don't fucking like Adam Sandler. However, your songs are funny as fuck. Nah. Why not do what Weird Al has been doing for 20 years? Not as talented as Weird Al. He tried to be an actor with the movie UHF and failed miserably. He knew he couldn't act, so he accepted it. Despite that he's been that he's produced comedy gold consistently. Again, he's a actually decent comedian and he satirizes stuff and has a fucking brain. Despite that he's produced comedy gold uh, consistently. So, Mr. Sandler, why don't you follow the path of Al? American can't handle another one of your movies anyway. 
Oh, sorry, no, it's Antoher. Antoher. That's how you spell another. Courtney Love. You think I'm going to rip her apart, don't you? Well, I'm not. It's not that I'm afraid of her suing me or trashing me on Twitter. I left those types of concerns a long time ago. Anything I could say to make fun of her a little bit has been said by 1,000 other comedians a thousand other times over the last 30 years. Hasn't been more than 30 years? I'm actually going to defend her a little bit. I wanted to bring up the tinfoil hat conspiracy that she had Kirk Cobain, her then-husband, killed. I know for the most part that conspiracy theories are demented loons. When you cut and paste this whole argument, their whole arguments, the theory that Courtney Love had anything to do with Cobain's death is stretching even for them. I would believe that the presence of reptilians and that the Illuminati controls the airways before I would believe that. The thought that you that we faked the fucking moon landing is more plausible than Courtney Love arranging Cobain's death. Hell, I'll buy the world is flat and Jimmy Hoffa killed the dinosaurs before I'll buy that. Why do I say this? Well, simply put, at the same time as Kurt Cobain's death, both of them were doing heroin like it was fucking candy corn. You cannot, she cannot deny this happened because there are massive public records of it, about it. At the time of Kurt's death, she was so fucked up on drugs, I wouldn't have trusted her to order a pepperoni pizza, let alone plan a, mur let alone a plan a murder. She probably couldn't remember her own fucking telephone number, let alone the competence and sobriety to dial it. So this woman in this drug-induced state is somehow supposed to have a contracted a hit to have a contracted a hitman to have contracted. A hitman. Planned the murder, made it look like a suicide, and then get away with it. Courtney Love, back in those days, could barely leave a house with her shoes tied. Kirk Cobain died of a gunshot wound that he did to himself, nothing more. Very sad, I know, but it was what it was. Do you really think that the police would have missed a murder? Yes. Do you really think that even now, Courtney Love is capable of getting away with murder? She's white, so yes. So, all you tinfoil hat wearers, you don't need to search for the truth on this one. One final thing to ponder while you wonder if the eye on the back of the dollar bill is actually looking at you. I stated Courtney Love is on every drug known to man and doing them as fast as I can as I eat cheeseburgers, but you should be dead by now. Do you really think that any hitman would have would have anything to do would would have anything to do with her? Most aiming of all she wouldn't have spent the money that she was supposed to give the hitman on more drugs. She wouldn't have spent... She would have spent the money. Wouldn't have means that she wouldn't... She wouldn't spend the money on hitman. On drugs. Matt Groening. Matt Groening. He fucking got the name right at the top of the fucking paragraph. In like the little name of the section. But he fucked it up. On the first fucking sentence. The legendary creator of The Simpsons, the longest running television show in history, that wouldn't have been a thing unless it got a hit on the. Uh, would have been. Yeah. It, it became popular on the Tracy Ullman show and then it got its own show. Uh, the Simpsons has been on for I don't know how long. It started when I was in second grade. I'm 32 now, so nobody else do the fucking math. Somebody else do the fucking math. We see The Simpsons do just about every goddamn thing imaginable. By the time this book it will be published, they'll be getting ready for a crossover with Family Guy. Some people are skeptical skeptical about it. I'll just watch it, expecting something, uh, expecting nothing, and enjoy it. After all these years, some people say The Simpsons are not funny. And some of the years, I have to agree with him. But lately, I think The Simpsons have gotten new life breathed into it. That being said, I just had to ask the question: I wonder when the fuck is it going to end, Matt? I mean, you know, I know you built Fox. That's not true. I know you've got. They've got to be loyal to you beyond measure. That's not even a functioning fucking sentence. I just have to know when are you going to end The Simpsons? I know some people don't like that thought, but maybe. But everything does come to an end after twenty-five plus years on the air, doing the same show. Matt, when is it over? I wonder if Matt feels like The Simpsons has been on so long that he feels it's like Saturday Night Live. That the Simpsons have evolved to a television staple. It would be funny if a sitcom like The Simpsons took the same status of the as the Tonight Show or SNL, where they go from different casts or hosts. The Simpsons could stay the same because their characters don't age. If they did, Bart would be about 36 right about now. If not older, 
if you include the Tracy Ullman shit, which got Star for the Simpsons. If the Simpsons does come to an end and Matt's magnum opus is complete, I for one won't be sad. Yeah, it's a magnum fucking opus. Everything that has a beginning has an end. I'll just watch the episodes again on DVD. Dean Koontz. I'm sure he's going to shit on Dean Koontz. You know I could go on a tirade about being second best. You know about the relation to you and King. I can do all that in fact one day I might. I'm not going to here though. I have something much more pressing to wonder about Dean Koontz. I just have to wonder why Dean has no have no movies your fucking books been made. He's published more novels than Stephen King or anybody else with the possible exception of James Patterson. And actually James Patterson has had books. Um... And I'm pretty sure Dean Koontz has had movies made of his books. Dean Koontz. Uh, let's see. Uh, Odd Thomas, I'm pretty sure, has been made into a movie. Uh, let's see. Movies. Dean Koontz movies. See. Watchers, Phantoms, uh, Black River. God damn it. Okay. Come on, phone. Stop being an asshole. Alright, there we go. Uh, Odd Thomas, Hideaway, Frankenstein, Dean Coon Soul Survivor, Demon Seed, The Passengers, Servants of Twilight, Watchers Were Born, Watchers 3, Whispers, Intensity. And I think The Dead Zone is his book. But it's all, I think it was made into a movie and a TV series. <laughs> nah. Anyway. <sighs> if there is a contemporary author that has published more than Koontz, send a complaint letter to the office of I don't give a fuck. Yeah, there are no movies based upon his work. Again, that's not patently fucking... That's just false. Maybe he has some sort of Bill Watterson thing going. Bill Watterson is the famous creator of the Calvin and Hobbes series and is a staunch opponent of any commercialization. Calvin and Hobbes have absolutely zero licensed merchandise. Maybe Koontz feels the same way that the characters in his novels should just be that and nothing more. That if they were put on put to the screen, some part of them would be lost. I do somewhat doubt this about Koontz, though, because he has had a few movies made of his books, but considering the vast body of work, and I believe less than five movies, there has to be something going on. You just said he has had no movies made of his fucking books, and you just admit that there's been movies made by you know from his books. The best example I can give is Mr. Murder. Mr. Murder is a fantastic novel and a god-awful movie. I don't know what Koontz's problem is getting his books translated into movies. He's probably one of those authors that most have complete creative control, because that's so terrible. And if anything has changed out of his novel, he flips his shit. I know he doesn't need the money, but it's got to bug him a little to leave it on the table. He couldn't... He could just not give a shit about getting his novels transformed into movies. He, you know... Again, he's had movies made. Fucking. Odd Thomas is a book that I have not seen, but it's, you know, he's had movies made of his shit. Slimming from the fucking 70s into the 2010s. Uh, me personally, there's a few uh, keen, uh, of Koontz's books that I love to see on the silver screen. Starting with Mr. Murder, a real version of it. Coal Fire, just for the fuck, flock of it, TikTok. <sighs> Bill Watterson. Dear Mr. Watterson, would you please, for the love of God, start Kevin and Hobbs again? You end the strip far too soon. There isn't that many good comics left in the paper, and Kevin and Hobbs is sorely needed. It's one of my favorite strips from when I was growing up, and I would give damn near anything to see the further adventures of Kevin and Hobbs. So what will it take, Mr. Watterson, for you to bring my beloved characters back? Well, he's in his fucking, like, 80s, I think, so he probably doesn't want to make bring it back. Uh, money? No, you probably have enough of that. Women, men, power, well... When the world is mine, I'll make sure you rule over millions. He'll be dead by then. Do you want the streets to run red with the blood of virgins? What's it going to take, Bill? If you're not going to continue the strip, despite the fact that I would sacrifice a thousand baby lambs to make Kevin and Hobbes live, live again, not live again, then you would at least consider letting a movie or cartoon special or something be made. Pretty, pretty, please. Give us something, Mr. Watterson. Anything in the world eagerly awaits the return of Calvin and Hobbes. Sincerely, a fat-ass fanboy of Calvin and Hobbes. Because you can't, you know, read web comics or shit like that. 
Avery Brooks. Avery Brooks, better known as Captain Benjamin Sisko, also known as the Black Dude on Spectre. This guy was renowned for playing some of the hardest hitting heroes that television has ever known. These days, he's done. He's he's some weird motherfucking music professor, because he's. I think Avery Brooks has also done music. Uh, Avery Brooks. Nah. Okay. I swear to God, he's been. Uh, Uh, he's done. I'm sure he's done music. He was in American History X, which was a great fucking movie. The man called Hawk, the big hit. Walking with the dinosaurs, or walking with dinosaurs. Solomon Northrop's Odyssey, which kind of weird because that's what uh, Solomon Northrop is the main character of Twelve Years a Slave. But anyway. Seriously, if you don't believe me, go watch the Captain's documentary. You can find it on Netflix Instant. He has absolutely gone bonkers. It's just funny to me to see the captain of the best, darkest, most violent space show has turned into a weird, kooky music man. Because he can't, apparently people can't be multi-fucking-dimensional. He can't. He even sounds weird, too. In the movie, every time Shatner asked him a question, he responded with a zen-like griddle. Funny how some people end up. He's dealing with fucking Shatner, who's a piece of shit, you know? <laughs> Fuck me. I'd, I'd, I'd answer fucking Shatner with a riddle, and then I'd proceed to beat him to death with a fucking clock. Fedor Elienko. Jesus tap dancing Christ, and I'm happy this motherfucker has fucked off into the sunset. This guy had to be the most overrated MMA fighter in the history of the universe. If you would like to see me give a more in-depth analysis of what that was, feel free to check out my YouTube channel, which is gone. I know Fedor fanboys are going to continue, continue he, fuck me, to insist that he was the greatest of all time. I don't know how many of the fanboys are left because they've got to be just holding on to sand at the moment. Just one question, why in the hell didn't he fight in the UFC? I'm not saying the door doesn't deserve... A spot in the history of MMA, he does. He needs to go down as one as a one-time great that became the victim of his own hype and then became a believer in his own legend. I wouldn't say he's the biggest farce or con job because the honor goes to him probably forever will be Kimbo Slice, who actually he was good in you know street fights, not necessarily in MMA. For me, Fedor will always be the guy who didn't put up and never shut up. One last hope, if you are a Fedor fanboy and you don't like what I have to say, send all complaints, complaints, courtesy to the office of I don't give a fuck. Can't be fucking original, can you? Johnny Depp. I'm a straight man. I have absolutely no sexual attraction to men. I say this not because of some weird celebration of my heterosexuality, just a simple statement of fact. Because you're so insecure about your own heterosexuality that... If you say a man is pretty, you'd be like, I'm not fucking gay, you faggot. Because he does love the word faggot, and it's, fucking, it's in his repertoire. I say this because... Uh, okay. I say this because if there is one guy on the planet who have a shot in hell of getting me to go gay, to go gay is what it should be, it'd be Johnny Depp. Fuck that shit. Johnny Depp is a scrawny piece of shit. Fucking give me... Alistair Overeem, Michael, uh, ah, fuck, Michael, shit, Luke Cage, um, Idris Elba, that piece of fucking fine gentleman, um, there's just like Ryan Reynolds, Sean Bean, he's a fucking, you know, uh, Liam Neeson, he's pretty fucking hot for an old guy, um, uh, Keanu Reeves. Uh, <sighs> Neville, to a certain extent, even though he's kind of muscly for a short dude. Who's a wrestler, if you don't know who Neville is. Uh, I said Will Smith sucked up all the cool for himself while Johnny Depp blows Will Smith out of the water. Johnny Depp is the best actor of, this, of his generation, in my opinion only. He's not even... He's not even that great of a fucking actor in his own fucking time. Like, the best movie he was in, where he wasn't, like, the stereotypical, weird, eccentric guy, 
was fucking Nightmare on Elm Street, which was his like first movie. And he wasn't like the weird eccentric motherfucker. He was just like 18 that got killed by Freddy fucking Krueger. He's also just an all-around great guy and one of the coolest motherfuckers to ever live. That's not remotely true. He's just so fucking likable. Adrian Paul. Who is Adrian Paul, you ask? You're better off not knowing. What's he done? It's better off for gone. What's, what's he doing now? Who gives a fuck? All I will say is he took a beloved series in the universe and fucked it right in the ass. I'm assuming he's talking about Highlander because I do believe that is who he, uh, let's see. Adrian Paul. I do believe he's the one who played uh, Duncan McLeod of the Clan McLeod. Also a very attractive man, I have to say. Um, and he's 58. And honestly, it's not that bad. Uh, the book, or the book, well, the series he was in wasn't actually that bad. And to say that, like, the Highlander was, like, great, it's dumb as shit. There are better series that do the concept of Highlander better. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the billionaire that said raise my taxes, lamenting how it's not right or fair that his secretary pays a higher tax rate than he does. Pretending to be the uh, to the masses that he actually gives a flying fuck about any of them. What's more amazing is that people bought it hook, line, and sinker. The reason he went on that PR campaign of raise my taxes and pay my fair share was to divert the backlash when he actually enjoyed the same rate he always has and made more money than most of them will in a lifetime. It was all just to make him the good guy. It, it's like he couldn't genuinely be a good guy. He couldn't genuinely have meant what he fucking said, right? There's a simple way to expose Warren Buffett's quote-unquote humanity and caring about the common man as just complete bullshit. He said raise my taxes so we can help those less fortunate, yet he paid the entire time the bare minimum of taxes that he had to. Probably found more loopholes than most people's accountants have ever dreamed of. Remember Warren has the best lawyers and accountants working for him. If Warren Buffett really gave rights ass about the everyday man, why didn't he overpay his taxes? There's a law that says you have to pay the minimum, but you don't have to get a refund. You can give it back. You don't have to pay just the minimum. You can give the government more money if you would like. You probably didn't want it to get stolen, basically, probably. Um, you don't have to pay just blah, blah, blah. One other thing Buffett, with his wealth, could have, could have paid in all his employees' taxes for two years and not even noticed. That would have actually been impressive... To me, here's something that would leave your critics like me speechless. Take your 46 billion fortune and give 45 of it away to charities. You'd still be rich and you would uh, have proved all this wrong. Will Warren do that though? How do you know he, ha he doesn't do that shit? Maybe he doesn't make a song and dance about giving shit to charity. Elephant tit asshole, no he won't. Elephant? Elephant spelled improperly, I'm pretty sure. Tit asshole. That's a very evocative image. I, the raise my taxes thing was a bullshit pledge to make him look like a good guy. Anyone with a half a brain can still see you're the same greedy cutthroat businessman that you've always been. There's nothing wrong with that, mind you. Hell, everyone on the planet is greedy. It's not necessarily true. Just be honest about it and you're going to try to pull the wool over our eyes. Then at least make your lives more opaque the trace than tracing papers is what I'm assuming it's supposed to be. But it was the tracing paper. At least, then have an answer for the forty-seven billion dollar elephant in the room. Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone, the actor that everybody thought would go away with the second millennium, he damn near did. To now, his career is enjoying a resurgence. Some people wonder why. Well, it's simple enough. He's the only predominant action hero I've seen that has gone older and accepted it. He accepts the reality he's not 30 or 40 anymore. He's an old man and accepts it. I'm pretty sure Arnold Schwarzenegger accepts it. And fuck me, other people have accepted it. Liam fucking Neeson. He, he became an action star after he was fucking old, so. He's just a badass old guy. Uh. He's also getting better movies that are not as painful to watch as, say, the 80s flick Cobra. So his movies are, as a result, are fucking awesome. He accepts that he's getting older and his movies 
are better for it. So to all you old actors there out there, take a cue from old Sly and at your age. Uh, God. Bono. All right, let's actually, before I go any further, let's see. All right, 30 minutes. I'll go for a little bit longer. Bono. Here's another activist for everything. Another drip who uses their celebrity status to cause people to cry crocodile, crocodile tears for whatever happens to be pissing them off at the moment. I've already spent to, uh, to spent to get an expensive amount of time in this book talking about people just like Bono, so I'm not going to repeat the same points. This is a territory of Ann Coulter, even though you repeat yourself numerous fucking times in this piece of shit. I just have a simple question with Bono in regards to the starving children or of wherever. A simple question, I believe you have a vast fortune. Why not use that to buy a whole lot of kids all the whole lot of food? Have you done that? No. You've kept your money to yourself just like all the others. Which I love this shit. Again, you're assuming that he actually hasn't done charitable work. Um, as much as I hate Bono, I hate fucking you too. Because it's not just my music. But, you know, it doesn't mean he's not a decent enough fucking person. Or, you know, because he's kind of a pretentious asshole. It doesn't mean he doesn't do good things behind the scenes. Because not everybody has to make a fucking song and dance of being like this great charitable person. And in fact, the people who do that shit are the people who are trying to scam motherfuckers. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck, the undisputed king of the of cuckoos. The man who made whiteboards stretching the facts, and facts are in quotes, and making mundane themes things seem like a crisis popular. This guy is so nutty and batshit weird that not even Fox News wanted anything to do with him and booted his ass out the door. Did that stop him? Hell no. Hell no is the wrong no. It's as if, you know, it's the mind no, not the, you know, you know, not, not N-O, K-N-O-W is the no he used. Uh, he started his own TV network to, the, to be broadcast on the internet. Sadly, you have to applaud anyone who skirts the traditional system for one of their own in complete creative control. This does not mean that Glenn will be feeding into his own delusion unchecked. This does mean that <coughs> Glenn will be feeding <coughs> into his own delusion unchecked and unchallenged. That will give us a chance for more comedy gold than what the fuck moments when the dipshit fin finally, not finally, finally starts to write new books. It gets better, though. Glenn Beck is planning his own version of Jonestown. Yes, that is right. He's currently trying to get several acres of land so he can make his own town. It's not the same thing as what Joan, well, Jones has was. It was, you know. Jonestown was a cult. I mean, your own town is not necessarily having a cult. Um, I wish I was kidding about this, but I'm not. The, this town will feature homes, shops, factories, and everything else that goes into a town. I don't know as of yet whether or not this town will use real money or Beck money. This town will not have any chain store strawers, not stores, strawers, in its borders. Funny that kind of goes against the economic freedom the founding fathers set up. Did you realize that they also believe black people were fucking inferior, right? So fuck the founding fathers on that. You should know that, Mr. Beck, after all, you whine about it enough. What's funniest or scariest, take your pick, of the town Beck envisions is the fact that on every street corner will be televisions with Guess Who on it. It should take you about a second to guess Glenn Beck. Isn't that kind of funny? The streets of Beck Town with monitors and a guy spouting off bullshit everywhere you go. Isn't that the t same type of shit he said Obama was going to do with this country? I think that's exactly what Beck said to the paranoid masses that with, that what the, uh, the Watches program. Glenn Beck does... It, it's fine. If Obama does it, holy shit, the fucking sky is falling. Odd how not one of the right wingers bring up the double standard when it falls in the favor of someone they like. Yeah. I for one wish Glenn, uh, uh, Glenn, back. Fuck me. I'm assuming it's supposed to be Glenn Beck. All the fucking success in the world with Becktown. Do you know why? It's simple because if he succeeds in making the Becktown in his lifetime, then that's where he'll be contained. Preaching to his cult-like followers who look at him like he's Moses come down from the mountain. I, for one, love it when idiots are all in the same place. I have to wonder about people who don't approve of magic underwear, though. 
Linebacker is a Mormon that believes in the power of magic underwear. Yes, I know it's ridiculous, but it's their thing, not mine. I didn't make the shit up. It also brings up the point of who will truly be in charge of Becktown. Will it be Glenn Beck, an elected leader, or will it be the Mormon Church? Will there be freedom of religion in the Becktown, in Becktown, or do you have to be a member to get in? Remember the Mormons just got done excommunicating someone who dared challenge their rules. Like I said, I hope it's completed soon because the sooner Becktown's done, the sooner all of those people will be out of my fucking hair. One last thing, I just have the feeling that, like Bill Maher, I think that Glenn Beck will be popping up a lot in my books. Because you're a fucking worthless writer. Alright, how long have I been recording for now? 35. All right, I'll stop it here. I'm not going to go to 40 fucking minutes because my throat's already fucking hurting. So, talk to everybody. Have a wonderful fucking day and fuck War Corps and his shitty pros.